I think we are all guilty of loving dates. <laughs> I mean, whether it's date setting, whether it's date suggesting, or maybe it's just hopeful. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I would love for the for to know the the, the date of the rapture or, yeah. the, or the date of the arrival of the second coming. And so, uh, let's talk about the 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 2025 date. Okay, there's this date. Um, it's not just manufactured out of thin air. Why? You know, again, for the average person that doesn't do this like what you guys do in the sense of, uh, you know, study full time and everything. Uh, why should 2025 be have any significance at all? Let's talk about that. Well, basically, just really quickly, they have a calendar and their concept is there are 7000 years between the creation. Just the Essenes have a calendar. Essenes, okay. yeah, between the creation of Gen in Genesis and the creations of a new heaven and a new earth. So that encompasses 6,000 years of man's history and a millennial reign. They have that all mapped out. So theoretically, if that's correct, the, the last thousand years starts in the year 6,000. And they divide these into jubilee periods, 50 year periods, which sometimes they call generations. And so with this, they, they mark the age of creation, the age of Torah and the age of grace, and then a millennial reign. So not trying to set dates per se, but on their calendar, that last part should start in the year 6,000. So the last generation or the last 50 year period from uh, before the year 6,000 would start in 2026. So the year 2025 is the Jubilee or the 50th year of a 50 year period. And so a lot of, a lot of the scrolls talk about the fact that prophecy can happen at any time, but the bulk of prophecies occur at the change of the ages and the change of the, the jubilee periods. So when we're looking at that and we, we think about Jesus talking about the last generation, that kind of thing, we see that a lot of prophecies will probably happen in 2026 to 2075. Now, like I would have guessed the, uh, Yom, or the, um, the war in with Hamas would have started a couple years from now, yeah, in the future. but it actually started you know, last year. Yep. So. Um, in thinking about this, I know, you know, my background's in the ancient Near East, and so mm -hmm. there's, you have the biblical chronology, the kings and everything else, and, and they do a lot in reignal years, and, you know, fifth king of, you know, fifth year of such and such. Well, in thinking about that, you have the trying to connect with a, like an absolute date, you know, in the sense of especially connecting with Egypt. Egypt yeah. is very helpful when you look about the different dynasties of Egypt. So, in, in that case, you have the whether it's the Egyptian chronology or even the biblical chronology, here you have the Essene chronology. So you have these different calendars out there. I guess for us, uh, we're, we're sitting here living in the, the uh, Gregorian chronology, right? <laughs> right. So, Josh, how do, how do we get, um, how do we anchor? Mm -hmm. how, 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 do you, how do you guys, how do you anchor the Essene calendar anywhere connected with the uh, Gregorian calendar, which will allow us to understand why there's, we're in 2025, I, well, shouldn't 2,000 years been there? So where does yeah. it anchor at? Yeah, there, there are definitely differences, but uh, Ken has actually developed a really wonderful free tool on a website called dsscalendar.org, where it puts, it, it superimposes the Essene calendar right onto our Gregorian calendar. Mm -hmm. So you could look at, uh, and, and it does it for year to month to day. We also do have a print version that he and I worked on together uh, if, people, if people are interested in that, if they want to hang it on their wall. But, but it's, a, it's a free resource and you can use that to see like, okay, so today's, you know, this date, what would, have that, what would that be on the Essene calendar? So that helps out a lot too. So then you don't have to do a bunch of math every single time you want to figure it out. And one thing that I wanted to mention too about the prophecies being in the last um, Jubilee, uh, and the the final jubilee of the age of Torah, so their ages would be 2,000 years apiece, and then there's a final like Sabbath um, age that's only 1,000 years. That's we would call that the millennial reign of Christ. Well, at the at the last 50 years of the age of Torah, that was between 25 A.D. and 75 A.D. according to our understanding of the count, or 76 A.D. Um, but it's in that it's in that time period. Well, the rapture is only one prophecy. There's a lot of prophecies that we have that's going to happen before Jesus returns and sets things straight for the millennial reign. Well, when you think about that, uh, 25 AD, um, Jesus came the first time probably around 29, 30 AD, somewhere around there. Starting uh, his ministry. Yeah, starting his ministry. And then look at all of the prophecies that got fulfilled in a really short amount of time uh, until he was... Uh, 
killed in 32 AD in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and all that. And then, and then finally you get, you get a few decades where things happen too until the destruction of the temple. But all of that really important stuff that sets the stage for the next age, they didn't have to wait till, till 75, 76 AD for that to occur. That happened pretty early in the final jubilee of uh, the age of Torah. So while we can't put a specific date, you know, we could say that, yeah, according to the Essene calendar, 2076 should be uh, like the, the first day of like the new, the oh, new, yeah. the new age, mm -hmm. um, if their calendar is correct and if, if, if it continues the way that we think it's going to. But that doesn't mean that we have to wait all that time or even seven years before that necessarily for the rapture. There's a lot of different ways that this could pan out. We could have an early rapture and you could have a gap between the rapture and the tribulation. That's, that's one um, possibility. You could also have a gap between the end of the tribulation and when the next age starts. How long is it going to take for Jesus to judge everybody? You know, how long is it going to take to set the world up and to build the amazing temple and city that we uh, read about at the end of Ezekiel? Which, of course, we all believe that's all totally literal. It's not figurative. Well, that stuff takes time, and I don't think Jesus is just going to come down, stamp his fingers, and everything's different. Um, I, I think that stuff is going to have to be built. So we don't necessarily have to wait that long. Uh, we can't put a date on the rapture, of course. There is, and there's nothing in the Dead Sea Scrolls saying any kind of date or anything like that. It, it's really consistent with biblical theology. Um, there's little hints of the rapture throughout it, but it, it doesn't give us a date. So we, we don't know. But uh, So the dates that we have are, are more about a, a, a time frame rather than a specific date. So we're looking at a 50 year time frame where a lot of things could happen early on just like uh, just like it did at the end, uh, end of the age of Torah. So I, I think I think that can kind of help hopefully relieve some people when they hear 2075, I gotta wait that long, I'm not well, gonna live that long. <laughs> you know, let, let's talk about that because, uh, you know, I, and I just like to throw things out yeah, because yeah. that's where my mind works. So we know on the Gregorian calendar that we are, if, if Jesus, most New Testament scholars believe Jesus was, was crucified and resurrected on 32 or 33 AD. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the kind of the, those two years. Some people will say 29, but that, that's not. The best date is that 32, 33 yeah. framework. Okay, so I don't think we've lost too much understanding in our calendar. What I mean by that is here, let's fast forward to 2032. Mm -hmm. Like, so here we've we got eight years from now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's pretty solid then that there's 2,000 years going from the time of Jesus uh, to this period of from 32 AD to 2032. And that is, a, that's an age. Mm -hmm. That's an age, right? I mean, according to the Essene, uh, cal uh, not calendar, but according to the Essene chronology of 2,000 years being an age. Mm -hmm. So is, is it possible, I, I, and we also know that again, 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. So are, are, things, are things based, um, could, could, it, could it be off? Could, could have the new age began at the time of Jesus' resurrection, and then the temple gets destroyed 40 years later in the new, still new age of grace? Could there, could there be, is it off? Could it be by 40 years off? Because here's what I'm saying is that, if we, let's say we come to 2075, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we'll, we'll still be here, Lord willing, maybe. Okay, that's, that's, that's 40 years from now. Oh, no, it's longer than that. It's 50 years. No, maybe I won't be here. Okay, but let's say we're sitting here and we're old and decrepit mm -hmm. by that time at 2075. Um, do, but it, now we're looking, hey, it's been 2,040 years from the time of Jesus' resurrection. That seems a little bit weird, doesn't it? That you would have not 2,000, you'd have 2,040. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, so, so the way that I understand it, they would have a specific date as the beginning of the next age, even if it doesn't specifically line up with anything prophetic on that date. So their, so their final jubilee in the age of Torah would have started 25 AD. And I don't know that there was anything specific that occurred there. Now, now we would say, well, the church age began in 32, 33 AD with, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it did. That's, that, that's when like the church really started. And we're coming up to 2000 year right. anniversary. Mm -hmm. But, but but the, the specific age and the way that they lined out their chronology would have been uh, 25 to 75. So the way that I, I kind of explain it in the book is it seems like in these final 50 year periods, and, and you can even see this in every age, you, you see this in the first age too with the Tower of Babel and Call of Abraham and all that, but it seems like there's this period of time where 
prophecies start to happen to get ready for the next age. So that when that, you know, 75, 76 AD uh, date hits, everything is set in place for the next age to begin, even if some of that started early. So it would be like if I was gonna throw a birthday party next Friday. You know, um, well, I have, I have some things to prepare before then. So I gotta get a cake, maybe I do that tomorrow, I gotta get the presents, I gotta hire attractions, you know, and I would spend the rest of this week like, like doing all that. So I'm doing things to get ready for the party, but that's not specifically the party, even though they're all gonna play important roles when the party happens. So that at Friday at three o'clock, let's say, the party happens. I think it's kind of the same way. So it, the way that I look at it, these, these final Jubilee periods, it's almost as if these two ages are kind of like melding together, where you get the start of one while the other one's winding down. And so you get this kind of blending thing. So I, I, I don't think that we would say necessarily that, well, since 32 AD, that was the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, so that's the start of that age. I don't, I don't think the Essenes would have saw it like that. That would have been one prophetic thing that happened in, in that age. At the tail end at of the that. At the tail end of to that. prepare for the next age. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then, but the official start would have been 75, 76 AD. But that, that's also why it's really difficult to put exact set dates mm -hmm. on this. It's, it's more of like time periods that we look at. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, the thing that I would add to that is I think we can rock solid set dates for their calendar system. Yeah. Not necessarily the prophecies on it. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, on their system, which ends at 75, um, they talked about the first coming of the Messiah when he would uh, atone for our sin nature. And the event that that would occur is one Shemitah after the end of the ninth Jubilee of that Una. And so if you look at the end of the age being 75 minus a whole Jubilee period, which is 25, and then you go forward to Shemitah, which is a seven year period, it brings us to 32. So they're saying in, it's, it's scroll 11Q13, they're saying that the Messiah would take care of our sin nature, uh, 32, 33 AD is what we would put on our calendar. So that, you know, lets it sink in really, really well, give or take a year. And so that means uh, the end of their calendar year for the year 6000 would be 75 or 76, 2075, 2076. So I think that's pretty rock solid. Uh, as far as the other prophecies, like he's saying, I mean, you've got Jesus being born, 30 years later dying, the church age starting several years later, uh, the destruction of the, the Jerusalem temple, two years later, the taking down of the Essene temple, and then the end of the age a couple of years later, and then several years later, you got the Bar Kokhba rebellion. And when that finally ended, that pretty much ended everything. And then the, the great disper dispersion. So you've got a 150 year period there where all sorts of things happen as a, a group, kind of. And so we're seeing that today, actually, if you take the 150 years before the year 6000, you had the Balfour Declaration, you had the establishment of Israel in 1948, the taking back of the Temple Mountain 67, uh, and all the other things that have happened, the, the new priesthood, the practice sacrifices that have started up. So all those things are going in process. So the year 6000, what Gregorian year would that be? Uh, 2075. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, because yeah, that would I mean, be the year 6000. Okay. So l let me ask you this question, and, and again, thinking out loud here, is so ultimately, if we're comparing what we've experienced in reality uh, in, this, in, in the sense of the Christian era, from a Christian perspective, we would recognize theologically that the Age of Grace began at Pentecost, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, and we're coming up on that 2,000 years. You know, here again, we're, we're, ten year, we're nine years short mm -hmm. or so, eight to nine years short. So does that make any, any difference in the sense of understanding that the age of grace truly, now not, not in a seen way, mm -hmm. but in a practical way, truly began at the time after Jesus' death and resurrection? I would, I would think it could, and I think it depends on how you use the term. Like, for instance, I know in a lot of the church fathers, they talk about how the Antichrist persecutes us, the believers, the church. And everybody says, oh, well, that's got to be, you know, post-trib rapture mm -hmm. type stuff. And when you look at the way they use the, the, the church, they're talking about believers. They actually define it from Abraham forward. So when they say church, and that's not how we use church, right. and I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but they mean believers, okay? 
And so when we like historically, say, even all the way back, right? Okay. So when we say the age of grace, you and I are, are talking about the church age, mm -hmm. and I think they're talking about the age of grace on a calendar, which may be different. So uh, the church age and their age of grace might be different than what we refer to as the church age. So yeah, I mean, anything you want to add to that? Oh no, it just it, that's exactly right. So you, you know, you ask any Christian nowadays, like like how how long is the church age? And they'd say, well, it's been about two thousand years, but we don't know how long it's going to last. It could be another six thousand years. But if you were to ask in a scene the same question, when they hear age, they're thinking a two thousand year period mm -hmm. specifically. So they would just say two thousand years. So yeah, it, it just depends on how we use the terms. Yeah, because obviously, you know, even in terms of you know, the, the Torah, as it relates to the, you know, the 613 commands, I mean, that came with Moses, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in 1400 BC, you know, 1445, mm -hmm. you know, 1444 BC. So that's, that's certainly, um, you know, many mm -hmm. centuries uh, after Abraham. Right. And so to, to have it be um, super tight like that, Exactly. It's hard to believe that yeah. the Torah began with, with Abraham. No, it's right? still the age of Torah even before the Torah came to be mm -hmm. because the age of Torah would have started with the call of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But it was, again, setting up everything that needed to be for that age to operate and work. So there's a lot of different prophecies and different ways on, on how things can be, uh, when things can happen within certain ages. But it's like, what is that period mostly known for? That's the age of Torah. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, according to some of the manuscripts, it talks about uh, the age of Torah or teaching is supposed to start with the guy that starts the uh, the, the the group of people. The so whole Ab yeah. so <laughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob kind of are the ones that started Israel, and the nation of Israel would bring Messiah. So that's the start of the age of Torah. And when you look at their chronology, the call of Abraham when he was 52, not when he went down to Canaan, but when he was called, actually was the year 2000 on their calendar. So uh, that hit exactly at the end of an age. So I mean, in so here we're talking about the, you know we're coming up on uh, the year you know 2025 you know we're we're got six months left to 24 or so six, you know, seven months left. The, then uh, what's significant then in the sense of trying to explain the scene calendar? What what's happening? Let's let's go to March uh, March of 2025 spring equinox. Let's talk about what is significant about that. Um, it begins the, uh, this next March begins the 50th year of this Jubilee period. And then the following year is the last generation or the last Jubilee before that. So we should start seeing a lot of prophecy fulfilled. And we have seen things that we've never seen before, like Iran actually attacking Israel. Mm. That's prophesied in several scrolls and in, yeah. you know, scriptures, but uh, we've never seen that before. And that, this was short-lived but it's not the only time this is going to happen because there's some great details in that. Uh, we've seen a lot of things happen with Israel and we will begin to see a lot of wars, uh, a lot of expansion, a lot of different things. Uh, Zephaniah, Obadiah talks about the time when they, uh, they colonize the Negev, they take back Gaza, they control Lebanon up to Zarephath, uh, which is the uh, six miles north of Lotani River, which is where they're saying they're going to uh, take and control that now as, as part of the, uh, now whether that actually happens or whether it happens in some uh, political figure later on gives the land back, which has happened multiple times. Either way, we see it in prophecy. So there's a lot of interesting things happening. Anything, Josh? Uh, I think he covered it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm just going to, I know what all of you are thinking out there, and I'm going to be your advocate right now, okay? Now, I don't want to believe that we have until 2075, okay? Mm -hmm. That uh, well, that's just till the beginning of the millennium, right? Mm -hmm. So we got a tribulation. We have all sorts of prophecies that need to be fulfilled in that time, and they could all come early because there's again, it's perfectly reasonable to have the end of the tribulation and still have some decades before the next age starts, and because there might there might be things that need to be done. Again, how long does how long does it take for Jesus to judge everybody at that time? How long does it take to build the temple and for people to, you know, beat their swords into plowshares and to get the word around the whole world? This is the way that things are now. How long does it take to build that temple in that in that city? Like that, you're talking like the millennial temple. Yeah, the millennial, like uh, that we read about in Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Like how long does all of that take? I don't. And again, I don't think it's going to be the day that Jesus plants his feet on the ground. All of a sudden, this stuff is miraculously just there. Uh, I, 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 it, it could be, and I, I don't know for sure, again, because there's a lot of different ways this could play out, but it could be that that takes time. 
And again, another option is you could have an early rapture and a later tribulation. And um, you could have, because the rapture isn't what starts the tribulation. It's, mm -hmm. it, you know, the, the covenant, the signing of the, the confirmation of the covenant with many is what starts mm -hmm. the tribulation. So there's a theory out there that it's possible you could have the rapture happen and you could have years in between that and, um, and the tribulation. So that's a possibility as well. I'm like you. I don't want to believe that we have to wait until <laughs> I'll be 90 years old <laughs> like, yeah, right. if, if I make it that long. Um, so, but, so there are different ways, and it, it might be that, but there are, there are ways to look at it where there's nothing preventing a rapture from, the rapture from happening immediately today before we even finish this interview. Mm -hmm. There's nothing preventing that. And then you can still have all of those prophecies happen within that period and still have the calendar make sense. Or maybe Jesus was just literally, I'm going to cut the day short and we're not going to wait till 2075. So there's, there's, God can do whatever he wants. Um, but I think the consistent view would be, to look at 2075, 2076 to be the time where everything is put in place, everything is finished, where we can start the first day of the millennial reign. Every, everything's done. Temples built, mm -hmm. cities built. Everybody knows the new rules. Um, they know the festivals. All the other nations know that they got to come up for ta uh, tabernacles and just every everything's done. And I, I would think just practically that's probably going to take some time to set up. I don't think it's going to be able to be done the last day of the tribulation. But, you know, again, there's different ways to look at it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. The whole idea of the scripture says that those days will be cut short. Now, that might be five days, or it might be days like uh, a couple be, of decades. Could it be five decades? Could it be a whole jubilee cut short? Um, I would assume. I, I, would, I wouldn't think it'd be a whole jubilee. Of course, if that's the case, the rapture should have happened couple of years ago. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so no, right. I guess not. Well, they, yeah, because, you know, you start thinking about, again, I love, uh, you know, we're not date setting here, but it's fun to speculate, isn't oh, it? Sure. I mean, I yeah. mean let's, no one's setting a date, but it's fun to think out loud about the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all to be, and no matter what we decide today or not figure out or whatever, we're still going to get up tomorrow and do the Lord's work. Okay? <laughs> no one's quitting their jobs. Um, I find I, it, go ahead. I, I think one point that we need to remember, too, is, we're talking about calendar systems, which may or may not be 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. If we looked at the modern Jewish calendar and, and tried to pinpoint the year 6,000, it's over 220 years away. Yeah. I'd much rather have it be 50 years instead <laughs> of 220. Yeah. You know, so if we're looking at the Gregorian calendar, I think we missed it by 24 years. <laughs> yeah, we are. Exactly. So it's just like, it's a calendar system. Well, and th that's kind of what I look at too is, you know, again, we, we are, you know, when, when Pope Gregory, you know, again, Gregorian, when, he, when he's, he's looking at, you know, the, the Julian calendar, the Roman calendar, and, and then he, he starts like, you know, we need to make this a little bit better, or at least Christianize it, right? Mm -hmm. Was, certainly that's what he did as a Catholic. Well, you know, he looked back and he could see there were some discrepancies. I think he dropped like 13 days or 16 days mm -hmm. off of He's like, well, this doesn't work. So let's just, we're going to evaporate those mm -hmm. and we're going to squeeze it all together. Which again, that's the nature of looking at different calendar systems. You know, Egyptians used to have a 10-day week. I mean, you have you know, stuff like that. So I, I think what, what I look at is, I, that's why I was leading up to, well, if the 32-33 date of Jesus' uh, death and resurrection is, is relatively accurate, mm -hmm. which I think most scholars would recognize that's true, mm -hmm. then we're coming up on the, an age yeah. ending. Yeah. So e even if it's not necessarily connected to the specifics of the Essene calendar, their idea of what an age would be as 2,000 years. Um, and, and in my mind, I like the idea much better. I'm sorry, guys. No <laughs> oh, offense. Yeah, no too. offense. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of thinking, which again, it's not, a, it's not a prophecy by any means, of thinking that the church age, the church had an opportunity to evangelize the world for a full age. Mm -hmm. And that would end roughly around 32 or 33 A.D. Yeah, Jesus might come back in that year to finish what he started when, and and, and there's still time for the tribulation before that. I mean, but, and if that's the case, man, the rapture should be coming up yeah. pretty soon. Because <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. what I find fascinating is going back to some of the other stuff that you and I have talked before, Josh, mm -hmm. about even Apophis and uh, yeah. thinking in terms not so much of the of the 2029 date mm -hmm. of and. Uh, but of the 2036 date, yeah, which I find interesting too. That you know, again, I don't think we could prove that Apophis arrives at 3.5 years into the tribulation yeah. to that level of specificity. But if we were to go with that as a theory, mm -hmm. uh, I know talking to you and, and, and Derek and e even Tom was um, 
you know, then you subtract three and a half years roughly. That, that it brings you to the fall of 2025. Yeah, it does. So you think, oh, wow. But uh, if, you were, if we were to look at it differently in the sense of a 33 date or 32 with that 2036, you know, in the middle of mm -hmm. 2036, and you take three and a half off of that, it brings it you back. Works. It brings you back. Uh, uh, if Apophis was to hit the Earth, mm -hmm. um, hypothetically in 2036, because even Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, um, I have a clip from him uh, not too long ago where he describes that the 2029 arrival of Apophis. Um, he said he 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 said there's this keyhole. This yeah. is the language that we use, and if it comes through and, and it's supposed to come at under 20,000, around 20,000 miles near the, the surface uh, of the earth in 2029. Mm -hmm. Well, the moon's at, you know, 240, mm -hmm. 240,000. So the way he was describing it was, if it comes through this keyhole, it's gonna affect the, the, gra the, the trajectory, the orbital trajectory of the Paphos, so that when it comes back, this is his words. Yeah. Secular guy, he's not, he's not a Christian. He said, if it comes through this key, the 600 mile keyhole um, in 2029 and, and just scrapes us, it will hit us in 2036. Yeah. I found that really amazing that he was willing to say that publicly because yeah. he's, he's got a lot at stake in, yeah. in his mindset. But again, that idea would then fit with a 2033. The dates uh, still work. The, date, the <laughs> dates work. Yeah. Which uh, gives me some hope that I'm, I won't be, I was born in 74, 1974. So You're the, still young. Well, at the end of it, I'll be, uh, I'll be 102, gentlemen. <laughs> I was born in 84, so. <laughs> okay, so you'll be, a little younger, you'll be a little younger than me. You're both young. I yeah. was born in 60. Uh, when was he born? It's been so long. <laughs> 65. You're 65. Yeah, 1965. Oh, wow. So we got 20 years apart, yeah. 10 years apart. Yeah, so you'll be 110, <laughs> roughly. If I, if I do the Essene diet and use the herbal medicine just <laughs> right, yeah. I might still be here. <laughs> well, well, I think it's interesting. No matter how you look at it, all those dates, the speculations, you notice it's all in the last jubilee, yeah. which is in the last generation, according to the scrolls. Yeah. Well, I, there's even another one, a 2068 date, and that's yes. seven years from 2075. It yeah. really is, yeah, the 2068 uh, Apophis date. So, I mean, mm -hmm. needless to say, I think all of us, regardless of whether we, we look at the Essene calendar, or where we look at anything else, the average person, I mean, come on, guys, the, the average person that is just all of us, here we are, um, I mean, thinking about the world. Mm -hmm. I think about my, my and, and when I mean the average person, I'm thinking about, you know, the, not, not in an academic sense. I don't really mean it that way. I just mean like my, my brothers or my sisters, the average American out there that's sitting there just living life and not necessarily focused on, on prophecy. They're looking around and, and they're going, man, the world's changed. Yeah. Something has changed. And so when we see, when we see this, and we see Israel becoming a nation in 1948, you know, them controlling uh, the, 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 the old city in 1967 in Jerusalem. We are not, this isn't, we don't, I don't see, oh, well, you know, Jesus will come back in a thousand years. No, the fact that God brought Israel back in 1948 mm -hmm. was, was the big sign yeah. that we are approaching the end of the age. And now, of course, we've seen a prophecy begin to unfold. So as we look, we don't even need the Essene calendar to tell us that, right? That's right. Uh, we can just look around and say, yes, here we are. But then to have some of these other calendars come and they seem very consistent is pretty amazing.